Mr. Abbott here, and it's time for another boring diagram explanation. These diagrams uh, go along with topic 8, and specifically they deal with the concepts of porosity, permeability, and capillarity. So we'll start off with porosity, and we're going to use the top diagram to explain the concept of porosity. I hope you know that a pore is a space. Um, these models are showing you you know, circles or beads to represent soil particles, but when you pack a soil together, there's definitely spaces in between them. So if you're looking at these three samples, you've got three samples A, B, and C. If you wanted to calculate the porosity, the porosity would be the percent of empty space, all of the spaces in between the particles of a sample. So it's the percent of empty space in a sample. Now, let's just imagine, I mean, if you look at it, you see that these three containers, these three cylinders, all have the exact same amount of beads. So let's imagine, let's just use for an example that we have 200 milliliters of beads in each container. If I wanted to measure the porosity of that, what I would have to do is I'd have to take water and I would physically pour water into the samples to completely fill up and saturate the pore spaces. So what I would do is I'd pour water in and the water would fill in all the tiny little spaces between the particles in this soil sample. So you'd fill it all the way up to the top. Now in this one, you'd fill it up, but you'd see that the spaces, you'd go all the way up to the dashed line, you'd fill up the spaces, there's bigger spaces, but now you have fewer of them. When you look at the last sample, okay, this has the largest size beads, these are 0.7 centimeter beads, you've got really big wide open spaces, each individual space, if I just look at this one, there's one big space there. That space, you call that each individual space a pore, but the largest sample has the biggest pores, but you can also see it's got the fewest pores. But we're going to fill up to measure the porosity. We have to fill up and figure out how much water fits between the spaces. So for porosity, we're going to pour, so you pour water into the container to fill the spaces. Now, if we actually conduct this, and we should in class, what you would see is even though there's different size pores, each one of them would take the same amount of water to fill the beads. And honestly, since these are nice round sorted samples for each of these, you would have about 80 milliliters of water would take to completely fill or saturated the, saturate those beads. If we look at that mathematically, there's 80 milliliters of water filling in between the 200 milliliters of beads, so that's giving you 40% porosity. So even though they're different sizes because they're the same shape and they're packed the same way, they wind up having identical porosities. So one thing that you should know is that porosity does not depend on particle size. Since these are round sorted particles, they're all the exact same porosity. Now, if you want to change the porosity, porosity changes with shape. Round objects don't fit together very well. If you had more angular or jagged objects, 
they'd pack together better and you'd get less space between them. Okay, packing. You can tightly pack or loosely pack a material. When you more tightly pack a substance, you're going to squish out the spaces in between the particles. So tighter packing means lower porosity. Now, the last thing that you have to deal with is sorting. Okay, if a sample is sorted, that means they're all the same size and shape. It would be real easy to imagine pouring the one centimeter beads into the 0.7 centimeter bead container. The little beads would be able to fill in the spaces between the large beads. When I have all the same size, they don't really fit together very well. But if I have a mixture of sizes, okay, the smaller ones fill the spaces between the larger ones, and that's going to reduce your porosity. So for sorting, if it's a sorted sample that's going to have more porosity, but when it becomes unsorted, another way of calling something unsorted is to say it's a mixture. Unsorted particles are going to have a lower porosity. Okay, it's much there's much less space when you have a mixture of sizes and shapes together. All right, permeability is another factor that we can measure about soils. I like to use the second part of this word, ability, in the definition. So if we look at permeability, it describes how well a material allows a fluid or allows water to pass through it. So I'm going to define this as the ability of a material to allow water to pass through. When we're measuring permeability, we're going to measure it as a rate. So we want to see how fast the material can flow through. We might have, you know, we might be talking something like the amount of liters per minute that can go through a soil. If you were doing one of these columns, these tubes that we set up to demonstrate this, you might talk about the number of milliliters per second which is able to flow through the material. All right, so when we do an experiment with permeability, we're going to take an equal volume. It's always an equal volume. Okay, there's the same amount of 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 1.0, and 1.3 centimeter particles. So we're going to take equal volume particles. We're going to fill it all the way up to the top with water. We're going to completely saturate it. You'll notice there's a clamp on the bottom. We undo the clamp and we time how long it takes for the water to drain out of the substance. We do the same thing here. We'd completely saturate this size particle and then we'd time how long it takes for the water to flow through and down into my container. All right, so we're going to be measuring how readily the fluid moves through or passes through our substance. All right. So you basically would pour water into the tubes. You're going to completely fill up the tubes and you're going to time how long it takes for the water to infiltrate. Okay. Now, looking at the diagrams above, it's pretty easy to see which one it would be easier to pass through. When there are nice large holes, more water is able to pass through faster. So what we observe when we look at permeability, porosity does not depend on size, but when we're dealing with permeability, 
larger sized particles have a greater permeability. It's just easier to fit through fewer large spaces than a ton of smaller, tiny, little spaces. So looking at these, since this has the largest size, sample D would be the most permeable. It would take the least time to go through D. And sample A, which is the smallest particles, smaller particles are going to have the least permeability. If you live in an area with soil that has really fine or small particles, one of the things that you'll see is you wind up getting more flooding because the water just can't, you know, infiltrate in very rapidly because, you know, soils with small particles have a lower permeability rate. Now, the one that most people, I mean, you actually probably observed it, but you didn't pay attention to it or you didn't understand what it was. Um, but one that isn't that obvious is a process or a, a term called capillarity. Um, to demonstrate capillarity, what we want to see is we're going to look for the upward movement of water in the spaces between the soil particles. So water can actually be drawn upwards by capillarity, sometimes called capillary action, in the spaces between the particle. It's similar to getting a meniscus. Okay, the way that you're going to demonstrate this is you take your columns and you put a wire or mesh screen on the bottom. It's got to be able to allow water to flow in and out. Then you're going to take this, you're going to stick the bottom of your container, the bottom of each tube, into a container filled with water. So we're putting this in water, and you're going to see that the surface of the water is going to completely saturate or fill in the spaces at the bottom. So the water from the container can flow through the screen and it moves up and fills in the spaces, the pores at the bottom. So we're starting here and then this would be a great thing to time lapse. Okay, But what you'd see is the water actually gets pulled upwards. A little bit of the water clings or adheres to the surface of the particles and some of the water from there gets drawn up in between the soil particles. So you'll see even though the water outside is at this level, we're getting this upward migration of water. Sometimes they'll even call that a capillary fringe. Now in 2b there are smaller particles, smaller spaces, and the water actually gets pulled up higher. When I've got a smaller space, more of the water is in contact with the sides, more of the water sticks to the particles, and with smaller particles in 2b, you'd see that the wetness would move up, and it would move up a larger distance than in 2c. Finally, the last tube, tube A, has the smallest particles. Once again, water gets drawn upwards, okay? But this time, because the spaces are really tiny, the particles get drawn upwards. If you have like a paper towel, and you stick the bottom of the paper towel, there are tiny little tubes, fibers between the wood in the paper towel, and you'd see that all of that water gets pulled upwards. Sorry about that interruption. Um, as you can see, um, we drew that the water gets drawn upward, the highest in smaller size particles. So the, the basic idea is when you're looking at capillarity, smaller particles have
greater capillarity. All right. So to summarize what we, you know, saw with these diagrams, one thing they typically ask you about is how does size affect each one of these quantities? So if you're looking at it, okay, if you look at porosity, porosity is the percentage of empty space and size makes no difference. So for porosity, it's a constant relationship. Okay, if I have three, seven, or 11 millimeter beads, they would all have the exact same porosity. Now, if I'm looking at permeability, if you went from small, say, three to seven to 11 millimeter beads, the larger beads have bigger spaces, so as size increases, permeability increases. Now, when you look at capillarity, which is the upward movement, if I went from 3 to 7 to 11 millimeter beads, for 3 millimeter beads, the smaller particles actually have greater capillary action. I hope that helps your understanding of these concepts. Take care.